that would hurt a saint for adding 10 mils of 0.5 molar in the OH. And we really don't know if we've reached the equivalence point yet. We don't know where we are in the titration. Um, just because it's the third point doesn't necessarily mean we're at the equivalence point. So for every step, what you, what you want to do uh, is you want to figure out how many moles of acid do I have, how many moles of base, and let that tell you uh, whether or not you're at the equivalence point. So my moles of my acid are always going to be the same, right? Moles of, of weak acid, it's what I, what I started with, um, was 0.01. I calculated that in, uh, in part B. Um, moles of base, that's going to change. Moles of my strong base, because I changed the volume. My initial molar concentration of 0.5, uh, always the same, that's polarity. And the volume here now is 10 mils. So I'm adding 0.01 milliliters. And what does that give me? It's going to give me 0 0.005. 0 0.0050 moles. So I compare my moles of my acid and my moles of my base. They're not the same, so I'm not at the equivalence point. I have more acid, so I still haven't reached the equivalence point yet. So what do we have going on here? I have my... Um, so you're going to set everything up just like you did in, in part B. Right, it looks exactly the same. It's just another point um, before you reach the equivalence point. That's not a mistake. This is a special point. So we have acetic acid, and we're reacting with sodium hydroxide. Let's just look at this reaction again to see what's going on. Um, we make some sodium acetate, right, just like we did before, and some water. My initial concentrations here, this initial moles, I have 0.01, and I have 0 0.005. I don't have any of this. You're always starting back up to, to your initial, so you're, you're, you're adding... 10 mils of sodium hydroxide here, um, it, it's not 10 plus the 8 that I already added, it's, it's like 2 more from part B. So I'm going to use up all of my sodium hydroxide here, and I'm going to use up half of this stuff, half of my weak acid, and so I end up with 0 0.005 moles of weak acid, and then, but I'm also making some weak base, so all of that strong base is going to turn into weak base as I neutralize that weak acid. So I have my acid, my weak acid, I have my base. I'm going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to figure out what the pH is. pH equals pKa, which we already found was 4.74, uh, plus the log of the base over the acid, 0 0.005, divided by 0 0.005. Oh, OK, so let's see. Uh, this is the log of 1. The log of 1 turns out to be 0, and so when we simplify this, you get pH is equal to 4.74, which is a very special point. This is where the pH equals pKa. The pH is just equal to the pKa. And this happens when you're halfway to the equivalence point. Halfway to the equivalence point. And this is important because when, when you're doing a titration, you can figure out uh, what the pKa is of an unknown acid, and then you can identify the acid based on its pKa. So we're going to do that in lab. This ha so halfway to the equivalence point pretty much means um, if I, so I added 10 mils to get to halfway to the, the equivalence point, if I add another 10 mils, I'll get to the equivalence point. So it, you're talking about the volume. I, I, need, I need twice as much volume now to get me to the equivalence point. But on a titration curve, this point is really significant. Let's see. So here, in lab, we're going to be able to figure out the equivalence point really easily because you're going to do the titration. It's going to turn colors right here. And what, So suppose that happens at 20 mils. You're not going to know that right away. You're not going to do that when, when you're starting the experiment. You don't know where the equivalence point is going to be. Um, but once you find it, then you can say, all right, well, and this is pH versus volume. Um, once you find that equivalence point, you're going to take half of it, say 10 mils, and you're going to say, what was the pH at 10 mils at halfway to the equivalence point? And that's where the pKa is. So the pH equals the pKa at halfway to the equivalence point. So that's what we're going to do in lab. We're going to do our titration curve. We're going to identify the equivalence point, find that volume, cut it in half, and then read off the pKa from there. And then we'll be able to compare pKa's um, the, the pKa is a bunch of acids and figure out which acid uh, we have. So that's on the, the pre-